This is week 25 of Care Updates every week until the whole world can type at the speed of thought. Today we're going to do something a little different from our normal updates. Instead of showing you something after it's finished, we're going to make something together. Let's design and build the trackball bolt-on for the Forge keyboard ecosystem. While Care Quarter 1 can replace a mouse, it's really more of a keyboard replacement with mouse capabilities built into it. The variable speed digital mouse control is really great for making quick selections, especially when you don't want to lift your hands off of your keyboard. But for things like CAD modeling, gaming, graphic design, it's really not going to give you as precise cursor control as an analog mouse. So one of the things that we set out to do when we were creating the Forge ecosystem is to have this device not only be an amazing keyboard replacement, but also an amazing mouse replacement. To be able to perform not just to the extent that you expect your existing mouse today, but to leverage CCOS to go above and beyond that. Before we jump in, I want to have a quick disclaimer for anybody out there who might be thinking about making their own custom mouse. It is a lot harder than making a custom keyboard, and it has pretty little to do with the technical challenges. It more is just the, uh, the supply chain limitations. There's so few people that actually make the sensors that you'll need that uh, getting a hold of them, even getting their attention to for them to sell one to you is a challenge. And then we had to sign an NDA just to get the, the spec sheet for the sensor. So there's just a sheer lack of information that's actually available to the average person out there. And yeah, it's just tough. Like, I don't know why the mouse world is so isolated and like, protected compared to the keyboard world, like the hobbyist keyboard community. There's tons of resources out there, but I just wanted to make sure that I shared that with you guys so you know what you're getting into. I also want to make sure we're all on the same page and knowing the difference in a regular mouse versus a trackball. So here we have the optical sensor and the lens, which is focusing it downwards. A regular mouse is just passing that sensor over a surface, in this case my hand. You see my cursor here. It's going to be moving around based on as I move it over that surface. A trackball is just the same thing, but upside down. And instead of moving the sensor over a surface, I'm moving a surface over the sensor. And instead of basically, you can think of this ball as a replacement for the table. And as I roll it around, the cursor will, of course, move. This is also really important in determining your materials. Ideally, you want something which is patterned but not textured. And you want something which is smooth but not reflective. So think about why a normal mouse doesn't work very well on a glass table. That sensor has a lot of trouble kind of picking up and determining how far it's moved along that surface. So something like just a steel ball bearing is very reflective, is not going to make for a good trackball. And something that is textured will be very easily picked up by that camera, but if it's not smooth, then it's not going to glide like you want it to across these tiny little bearings that the trackball is sitting on top of. This is like the CAD equivalent of a rough draft. Each of these blocks inside represents the outer extents of some technical component that I know I need to save space for, but None of this geometry is actually going to be used. This is just um, basically because I've been thinking about this design for so long now, I need to get it out of my head, I need to get it on paper, and I guess more importantly, I need to get it into my hands so that I can actually attach this to my Master Forge and make sure that the scale is right and that everything feels right, and then I can use this as sort of an underlay where I can start to parametrically sculpt the production design. It's really important to me that this is a fantastic trackball, regardless of whether or not it's hooked up to your Forge keyboard. So yes, of course, I'll be showing you some different configurations that I have in mind and how you can use this with your Master Forge, how it connects. But before we get into all that, I want us to first consider this as a standalone device. Most trackballs are designed to be used with either your thumb or your fingertips. One thing that I do like about this potential direction is you can either navigate with your fingertips, click with your thumb, or flip it around and do the opposite. Another thing that's really critical in trackball design is how much of the ball is exposed as well as how accessible is that ball to your fingertips. So I've got one similar to this one here and most trackballs have like yeah, a single surface, either a curved surface or a flat surface uh, like these where the ball is peeking out of. And that's great, uh, it works, but the problem with that is that I really only am getting 
maybe 60 or 70 degrees of movement with the 360 degrees available on that ball. You can see how I've started to experiment with some of those principles using these broken surfaces here, but I plan to leverage this a lot more in the next prototype. I've also been thinking about how this is going to come apart in a way that is manufacturable and is leveraging some of the machines we've already purchased here for the Forge ecosystem, making sure that we're able to make this out of materials that are a leg up from anything else you'd see in the consumer electronics industry, and therefore making this trackball worthy of the Forge name. This is still just another quick prototype, but you can see what I mean as far as accentuating that face that's cutting into the trackball in order to expose more of the surface area there. So like with this design, I can fit three fingers on it and really kind of manipulate it in 3D space. Whereas if I were to try and fit three fingers on this design, like my fingers, I really have to squeeze them on there and there's nowhere really for them to go. And you don't have to sacrifice security in order to get that. Like I could really whip this thing and it's not going anywhere. At a conceptual level, this design seems to be working, but there's still a lot more work to do. As we start thinking about manufacturability, one of the things that I wanted to try was making an exoskeleton similar to the one that we created for the Master Forge. And basically what this is, is an aluminum alloy with a good balance between bendability and machine ability so that we can cut out these scores and bend it as if it were sheet metal, almost like a piece of origami. And in addition to just making the product stronger, it also allows us to mount PCBs uh, to any interior surface. So things are a lot cleaner and a lot more compact inside of the device. And it also is going to just open up the doors for all kinds of beautiful finishes that we can do on metal that just aren't possible on plastic. So the next step is to create this three-dimensional sketch, which is gonna serve as a skeletal system for multiple components within this product. So every single feature on both the exoskeleton as well as the base plate is gonna be tied to this one sketch. Every single rib, every single boss, every single wall. Uh, so anytime that I adjust one of these dimensions or one of these relations that you see sprinkled around inside, that everything moving forward is just going to automatically update. And this saves me a ton of time. I already know building this, I'm gonna change at least 100 things, 100 different times and I cannot rebuild this thing from scratch every time. So that's why parametric modeling is so useful just to reduce that mental load and save you a ton of time. Here's an example of a parametrically generated exoskeleton which is ready to be manufactured. So here's a couple that I printed just so we can test fitment before we go on to making these out of metal. And while they were printing, I found this a piece of cherry in the scrap pile, so we cut out some just placeholder buttons as well. Some of you may have noticed that we got an updated desk mat from last week's video, and I love how the grid is looking on this thing. The contrast I think is perfect, works in both light and dark environments, uh, so I'm definitely going to be using this as a backdrop in a lot of videos in the future. So we're putting the exoskeleton onto our base plate now starting with our rubber feet. This plastic is designed to look like metal. It doesn't, but um, I mean, it does look bad. Just doesn't look like metal. So this was a good fitment test. Everything went together as expected. So I think we're ready to cut some metal here. This would be an example of a right mounted trackball. This would be a left mounted trackball. Here we have a centrally mounted trackball. You could put your trackball by itself. You could put your trackball over here if you wanted as quick finger access as possible. Uh, you could put it in the back potentially if you wanted to like, use your palm on it or something. 
Well, keep in mind that just because you can put it everywhere doesn't mean you necessarily should put it everywhere. And the fact that it has rails on both sides means that it can act as a connector between two other parts and it also can slide along any of the rails around the perimeter so that um, it's not just like a fixed number of locations. You can sort of slide it and fit it exactly as you need it. And keep in mind that both halves of the Master Forge have USB hub functionality, so you can have the cable of the trackball go through any of the four shoulder ports or both of the rear ports. And there's two USB cables underneath that are fully protected and your cable can bail up inside of there so you don't have bunch of cables just like jutting out of your device. Even as a prototype, this is pretty strong. Like it's not bolted on or anything, it's all friction fit. Let me know in the comments what color you think we should make the buttons and what color we should make the ball of the trackball. I want to make sure this design is extra special because it's one of the few bolt-ons that we're including completely free of charge for everybody who's pre-ordered the Master Forge at ForgeKeyboard.com. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for designing this trackball with me. And I hope you'll hit that subscribe button so you can see how the final thing turns out.